Back summer 2015, it's time for the round of seven to continue. We have Unit versus Let Me Farm. Uh, we figured out that uh, these guys are the second to last match of the night, the last one being a Maz versus Purple from Team Archon. Uh, joining with me on the desk, I have Lothar from Team Annihilum, and we have Alesh uh, from Team My Insanity. How's it going, Alesh? It's doing good. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, how did you do in the tournament? Uh, I didn't do that well. I brought a bad lineup. I went to two, and after that, I was doing like chilling with other people, doing some Logitech stuff, that kind of stuff. So yeah, you're telling me that you think you overthought the deck submission. The you, had, you had the opportunity to change it last second, and then um, was well, you're like, well, yeah, I'm going to do this and do that, and then it just ended up like messing with you. Yeah. What, ha what happened exactly? Uh, well, pretty much like I had a really, really good lineup. I, would, I was comfortable with it. Right? I had La Handlock, I had Rogue, and I had Grim Patron, and then I switched those two decks. I switched Handlock to Zoo. Like really, really bad zoo, and then I played Secret Hunter, which I don't know if people know. It's like from Letter Roman, Roman P when Drank won with it on Legend. Oh, right, it's right, right. It's like with the Mad Bombers, you know, with uh, misdirections and that kind of stuff. But it didn't just work yeah. out quite so well. Yeah. I happens. saw that uh, that deck a lot a few times, and it didn't work once. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's uh, kind of unstable. So I, I, I like the problem with it was that like my my teammate fake was like, dude, you really have to try this deck. Like, one day before the end mm -hmm. of uh, submission, I was like, yeah, I'll try it. And I w went on letter. I was like, 10-0. I was like, oh my god, this it's deck amazing, is crazy. Yeah. And then I went, play with this deck, and I went like 1-4 with the deck. <laughs> so, uh, Oof, not, not too great. Well, um, I guess there's always next time. There's always <laughs> next time. Let's go ahead and check out the, the classes that these guys chose. Uh, you need went Druid, Hunter, and Rogue. And Let Me Farm did Rogue, Warlock, and Warrior. So interesting that Unid didn't choose to bring Warlock, and Let Me Farm didn't choose to bring Hunter. Let Me Farm is another Grease player here. Yeah. And Anid oh, is you're right. Yeah, and Anid has been showing up. Mm -hmm. And Anid, I think it's a French, I'm not really sure. But yeah. like, Anid is French. Yeah. yeah, he's a huge French player. Like, he's one of their heroes to always do well. You know, you look at exactly. guys like Strifecrow, Kalento, uh, life coach as like the big titans of the West, um, and in the French community they are part of the West, but they, they also have their own isolated community. You need uh, Mormont, uh, Maverick, Maverick. <laughs> Maverick, but he's Belgian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, those guys are the ones they, they always look to, to do really well. And yeah, like you need is like a really big internet hero. He always plays those small fires. He always do uh, he always does really well in them. So really known player to play. In right. circle. I think his uh, best accomplishment that people were paying attention to, at least for events on Twitch, was um, the, the Millennium House Cup. That's where he's able to get his top three there. And he chose to bring Rogue. Now, I'm really fascinated by people who choose to bring Rogue in a format like this because I always feel like Rogue's never in a truly comfortable enough state to play, but a lot of people always tend to disagree and, and bring it anyways. How do you evaluate the, the state of Rogue right now in the tournament? I share your thoughts here. Like, for I agree. me, it's kind of a deck that can work out really great. Oh or just yeah, sure. Backfire yeah. so hard. It's like um, it's draw dependent, really draw dependent, but also it's a, it lacks any counters. It's a huge problem if you're in the game when there's so much burst. Yeah. If you get behind as a rogue, it feels like it's really hard to. Oh, you always just like stuck. Like I have to draw this two card combination, yeah. and, and it's usually blade flurry and oil or yeah, deadly yeah, poison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without that, you can't win. You just can't win without deadly poison. I think I have to like agree with uh, Lothar here. Like the deck, uh, it's interesting. Like if there, there are some players who really like to play rogue, right? And for those players, rogue is like holy grail of Hearthstone. They can beat like everything. And then you have like the players who are not really comfortable with it. And then usually, if you're not that kind of player who always plays rogue, I wouldn't choose rogue to play in a tournament. It's really hard. There's a lot of yeah. small nuances, especially if the Lord Locker Joe pops out of the pilot shredder. You never know what happens. <laughs> Ayo. That can always backfire. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> well, he picks up... <laughs> the Edwin uh, Van Cleef yeah. is very, very oh, interesting yeah. choice here. This is a you very aggressive play. Is this an aggressive play? Oh, he did oh, that. I, yeah, I really thought he was playing Van Cleef. Yeah, same. I mean, also, like, Van Cleef could be really, really good against this kind of... Uh, a warrior, right? Like, usually this warrior doesn't play BGH. Sometimes they do, but it's not quite often. So just play around one execute, two executes. Yeah. To be honest, like, I always dislike the Edwin Van Cleef on the all ins, but in this situation, when you play against a warrior, I think it's really needed at the state of the game. Like, 
Well, if if he didn't kill off the acolyte, it could have popped. It could have bumped into the Van Cleave and executed. So I think he was just trying to maximize his damage relative to uh, what he had on board and pressure for the win. Oh wow, that's flash inner rage. Inner rage was really nice too. Now that's a board clear on the other end. But the problem with the Van Cleave right now is that the fact that there are no no combo apart from the backstabs available for him. So it's, well, he can. Well, actually, he can. Turn seven, he can play backstab, Pilato Shredder, and Edwin, but then there's still a five, five two million on board. Yeah, he needs something else with it. Coin armor up. That's how desperate Let Me Farm wants to survive. <laughs> Considering you know, he understands I that Rogue him. has a lot of burst. Yeah, and there's oh Emperor already in hand, so uh, the, the coin doesn't really matter because you will have six coins when you play the Emperor. Yeah, I, I think this is the Edwin Fan Thief turn. You probably just go backstab, deadly poison, Edwin. Probably. And uh, hope you hope for Edwin to survive, which we, which probably might. Like you need this, Edwin needs to do a lot of work if Rogue wants to win this game. Yeah, it has to be execute. But even if he has execute, he needs an activator, mm -hmm. and the only activator is War Song plus the Acolyte of Pain, which is not that bad. Yeah. It's not. It's not awful. On the other hand, I think like here, let me farm. It's a little bit risky because you're kind of low, but you see that Anid has only one card in his end. So you could just go for Emperor and wait it up. You can also go like for Deadly Poison and try to set up maybe some crazy turns next turn, but you don't really have Inner Rage, which you know you would probably need. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't mind setting up Emperor Thorson. Mm -hmm. He has one card in hand, there's uh, nine damage on board, and you're at 16 health. So I don't think two. it's very hard for two cards to generate seven damage. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I did disagrees. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like Alesh said, this is also another opportunity mm -hmm. where you can go for pressure. You might even pick up a way to, to win. Well, like, if he fills up the board, and then you have, like, a Frothy Berserk that you pick up, you might kill him. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, in this situation, he'll just want to set up a double Battle Rage next turn with Acolyte of Pain. Yeah. That, that will generate six cards, uh, f uh, sorry, five cards. And w within those five cards, you kind of want to find the w that one execute. I'm actually curious as to why he attacked the Van Cleef before he sprinted. Is there is that because like I don't think it truly mattered unless it was another prep oil. But in any case, is there a reason why you attacked? I just want to know for sequencing purposes. I don't think there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it should then be the other. It was, way it was just a very quirky thing. I was like, yeah. oh, I think okay. it doesn't really matter. So Dread Cursor is big though here. Uh, it's three more damage. Uh, and probably Green Patron here. He could go for Acolyte, with a better rage. Uh, that's another option. I think. Well, the, but I, I think really the like main it. plan was to play the Acolyte, but in this situation, he just wants to get another card with the Battle Rages. So mm -hmm. he double Battle Rages this turn, and to he's get gonna dig for Execute. To, yeah. yeah, dig for Execute or second Inner Rage, so mm -hmm. he can kill off the Edwin with uh, with the Pirate, because then he will just use the Inner Rage on the Pirate. Edwin Van Cleef will be damaged. We'll see. But yeah. if he I plays Patron right now, then he's left w without card draw, and this is something that I, I don't think he's uh, he can do that actually. Yeah, it's, this is really tough, right? Because like now you have to decide what cards are you going to play around, right? You can play Grim Patron, which is more safe. You'll be able to probably kill Grim Patron if you need to. Uh, but then you don't play around by like, play Flurry for Oh man, yeah, having to trade both into the bank cleave is I didn't like really that at painful. all. I think. Using both battle rages to draw six cards here, still have the uh, probably still have the count up because six cards from like a 14 card deck, I, I think, and there are still two executes. Are a huge chance to just draw that, draw that, yeah. and maybe finish the game next turn. Yeah, this I think Rogue, I think that was like a play to survive because you're afraid of what can happen. Your opponent demonstrated he might have played flurry off of a sprint, but. Is that a play to win? And I think that's a I think that turn example is a really good example of that that saying. Because we say it a lot as casters, mm -hmm. but it's sometimes hard to conceptualize. But if you just analyze it, like how do you climb back now? Because Rogue is still in a still a dominant position. He has yes. even stickier minion than Van Cleef. Exactly. And the battle rangers have no value almost. Like well, now it's two two mana for one card. They they kind of have value now if you can task yeah. master the acolyte. But that's still, it's like you said, it, it could have been you know three four cards type of thing. Six. Six cards, even. Six oh. cards for four mana. I guess that's a good deal. It, it's, it's a pretty good deal. It's pretty good. You're almost at pre-nerf gadget stand level. <laughs> <laughs> but here's I the thing about the battle rage, too. It, it soaks up the remaining mana. So yeah, as I mean, much like as you're drawing cards, will you die? Yes, now you don't have the mana to actually use the battle rages. The turn before was the only turn when you can manage to play those. Okay. Armorsmith is 
That's the end of the game because you didn't draw the the well, execute. And Rogue doesn't it's have the damage. Yeah, he, Rogue doesn't have the like, damage just yet. Uh, I mean, the the problem is that like the Rogue is gonna get health, so he's gonna be really really out of range. Or uh, he can also draw cards for little maybe even. I think he will just sprint for eviscerate. He has two still hmm. in his hand uh, in his deck, right? Oh, uh, now yes. I think you just slow tap anti, and you just like secure win. That's actually a, a reasonable play, too, because if you blow Theb an Antique Heal bot, he can't actually play spells to punish you for a kill, because if you sprint and you don't end up doing anything, you're going to sap a minion, and then it's yeah. like, well, he still might kill you with frothing stuff. Yeah, um, that is a good point. He has two whirlwinds in the hand, so like, if, if his opponent had a frothing berserker and war song number two, he could die, or he could draw into it with Acolyte. Yeah, I think if you Antique Lothab here, there's no way you can lose. You need a tr I don't think you need to trade into the cool Taskmaster, so that way you get a better favorable position. Yeah, I would just go for it. I think you yeah. just hit phase. I think, yeah, you don't hit. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, what do you do if you're let me farm? Nothing. <laughs> That's a very, very can sad Can he do situation. anything? Like, you, you can generate two armor, four armor this turn. That's basically it. Do Doomsayer. Doomsayer is something he can do. Yeah, I think like this whole game goes back to that round six where he could play uh, Emperor, and instead of that, he chose to play uh, Dead Spite. Yeah. Right? Oh, I think it was round seven, actually. I'm sorry. Well, that was um, the setup to, in my opinion, that was the setup to play the Acolyte of Pain and Double Battle Rage with the, de with the, oh, with yeah, the Death Spite, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And he didn't do that, like, he changed his mind. And when he played the, the Death Spite uh, instead of the Emperor, it actually uh, didn't make any sense with the upcoming turns. Like, the Emperor would have been much better. Okay. So you can kill Shredder, get a Doomsayer. Yeah, but I guess you want to go into the Acolyte <laughs> first. You can reduce the most damage on board, yeah. too. I mean, you know, Roche still doesn't have the damage to kill. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, doesn't Seven, have damage eight. to kill, but the sprint, I think, both Eviscerates are still in the deck, I think. Yeah, but you need sprint yeah. and then prep Eviscerate. But you, you need to sprint if there's range to prep if it's yeah. range. Yeah. He's going to be at too much health. But both preps are still. I mean, like, it's unlikely that. Uh, okay, we'll see. Alright, well, there's a lot of ways for him to kill. And even if he doesn't kill, there's a lot of ways for him to put the pressure on. Although, Warsong Commander is in the hand. Yeah, I mean, Warsong Commander is in the hand, but again, like, you don't really have much to play with it. Like, you might, like, Blood Hoarder, try to dig something. Yeah, that's true. Like he needs like the frothing berserkers yeah. along with that too, and he also gave it one whirlwind. So I need decides to go for this, but oh, is and I think oil? oil's enough, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, for sure. That's gonna wrap go. it up. So looks like we have game number one in the books. You need takes a very important win here, taking out um, the patron warrior, the rogue. Yeah, definitely. Like this matchup is really hard to win from both sides. Uh, sometimes, like, uh, as a warrior, you set a board with Grim Patrons, but he has Blade Flurry and you don't have, like, extra damage to kill him. Then sometimes this Grim Patron kills you with, like, Frothing Berserkers and you just cannot do anything as, ab about it uh, sure. as a rogue player. Okay. Well, uh, from here we have Let Me Farm. Uh, he can choose to switch his deck if he so chooses to please. And he ends up queuing up Patron again? Mm -hmm. All right. Fair enough. Against Druid, it's pretty decent. Yeah. And if he queues up Hunter, I mean, patrons can deal with Hunter pretty well. Sometimes. I mean, I always feel like the matchup's very dynamic. It can either go really bad or really well, depends on how the draws go. Yeah, it's all about those fiery war access, about those armor smiths and that kind of stuff. If you get them, you usually win. If you don't, you just lose. Peculiar enough, he's not keeping the fiery war as an opening hand. Yeah, I think I would like to see him keep it, because it's like so good against uh, Shredders. Yeah. It's uh, it's still a good card. Like yeah, what do you want to get else? Um, Frozen Berserk is okay. It's not that bad against the uh, mm. Druid, especially if you can like pump it to six attack to kill in one strike and do the claw. But it's I I don't know. I still would favor the weapon here. Yeah, weapons against Druid, though, generally speaking, don't have much effect outside of death. Card. It's just. It feels it's like it's, you have to trade two swat swings into it, and then Druid is such a high advantage in health. But Druid only has one 4-drop, which is Pilot Shredder, and this is the case here. Uh, 
this was a really interesting play from uh, the warrior, right? Like he just coins lead hoarder. I'm not really sure if I like agree with it because like he wants him to hero power really badly. Yeah. Instead of. Um, but like, I mean, if you're gonna have wild growth, you're gonna play wild growth anyway. Right. If you have hero power, like if you don't have it, you're just like you're gonna hero power and you didn't gain anything. From Look at that one. He just did draw. Fire oh. okay. axe. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Steam wheel sniper. That card is fun. I love this card. Imagine if it's like you get the Steam Wheel Sniper and now you could give armor as the warrior player to a minion. <laughs> now that is insane. That's insane. I bet that will that will be a new card sometime <laughs> in the future. In my sights. Yeah, so this Wait. is gonna be the bear form, definitely. You guys are best friends? Yeah, of definitely. course. Oh. Handshake included. Oh, Low turn. I get it. <laughs> oh that's off. Oh. Yeah, they, they don't see it now. Then oh, damn. We just right. shake hands, Twitch. It's uh, based off what happened at Bucharest. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he has an execute for uh, the Druid of the Claw right now. Mm -hmm. He could, like, set up board maybe with, like, frotting. But I'm not really sure if he wanted to do that because he kind of really want that card uh, for lethal. He could also just set up Echolite. It's kind of annoying for Druid. Yeah. He could go also. Oh. So, Wind and Execute? That's what you should do no, here. No, 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 no. Oh, well, it's so hard. Everything. Like, there's not not a really nice play here. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's just that exactly. Uh, I didn't like what's, that. What's unfortunate about this is that it's gonna get silenced. That's mm. gonna cut a huge portion of the card draw out from patron, which is very costly. Oh, do you do now? Uh, <laughs> I, I I think denying card draw is really powerful, yeah. considering that you even have a better. Thorsen when L Laura comes down because when the Laura comes down then you draw two more cards and the cards you reduce in your hand here as Thorsen are they even super impactful I mean uh. playing Thorsen on turn six is, is often great but like on the other hand you just saw uh, let me farm playing uh, his execute right and yeah, like that's true. E everything like he Played was kind of awkward from his position, yeah. so might as well just like go try for it. And the Yikes. fire warx here again might be yeah. Clutch. It's gonna be drawing cards mm -hmm. though, a lot of cards. Yeah. Just whirlwind fire warx. Do you need the whirlwind right now? You have two. Bu uh, you have two folding berserkers. Yeah, true. With already Varsan commander. Oh. Yeah, I guess you can just push fire into warx. the Thorsen with the acolyte and then hit with the fiery war axe. It's still a very difficult situation for the warrior. It is. You're, still, you're taking a lot of damage. And, you know, don't... We, I guess something we didn't discount or something we didn't count was the amount of health warrior has. And there is a lot of damage that could be pushed out here. That was also a slight misplay because he did attack first with the weapon instead of the Alkali of Pen. If he was oh, playing... we could have played Execute. Yeah. If, if he was planning on attacking anyway with the Alkali of Pen, he should have done that first to get yeah. the draw first. I think he knows. Because he, knows. Yeah. he could have played Execute and then he could have killed off the, yeah. exactly. the Storm Wheel Sniper. Yeah. Now, now he just dies to combo. <laughs> and now he's thinking, oh, now I can use Execute for one damage. Right. <laughs> wow, nice. Actually, it's a legitimate concern now. Yeah, actually, because with up. Emperor, with Emperor, he yeah. just dies to combo. Emperor yeah. reduces the combo from 9 to 7, mm -hmm. and then that is 18 damage. <laughs> Very risky. And ends up being okay for now, but again, this is Could also a, much much this is yeah. a lethal setup, because yeah. you have Druid the Claw now with Savage Druid the Claw with Savage Roar, yeah. So now we'll have to see a <sighs> Throating Berserker, Armor Smith. Nah, that, that, that's, that doesn't do anything. Well, you have to Whirlwind to execute, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's first thing. Uh, so I think you... What about if you play... Wilson Commander, Armor Smith. Nah, that, that still one man short. I think the the coin usage on turn one. Yeah, hurt him yeah. a lot. Hurt him a lot. Because what also you can do with um, with with the loot hoarder is play it on turn two and then bait the druid to want a hero power as yeah. opposed to play a shade of next yeah. is. Well, instead you trade the coin for two. You, you trade the coin for two damage, which was not really the case to push you over the edge in this matchup here. Exactly. Okay, so he plays the Frotting Berserker. Who just dies a single Wrath yeah. for one mana? Yeah, Wrath, and then you can fill up the board here. Oh, yikes. That's really nice, because now Lothab locks spells, and he can still Wrath and develop, and this, this is almost certainly lethal next turn, unless there's a huge play on the Warrior side. With um, spells for five mana more. <laughs> 
Might be tough. Yeah, I think this is the game. Um, there's nothing much. I don't, I don't like to fire do. shots at the players, but I really think Let Me Farm isn't playing at the top of his skill uh, when playing Patron. That's a small, very small misplays that are leading to huge outcomes for, for him. I mean, negative outcomes for yeah. him. No, it happens. I mean, at this stage, this is like the this is the point where you win or you just fall outside. Like, this is probably where the losing hurts the most. I yeah. mean, it does suck to go 0-2 in a tournament because you're like, well, I'm out early. But when you invest this much time, you're 5-1, and one, and it's like you're at the finish line, but you fall short. That's, that's excruciating. That's just rough. That's exactly just like what happened to Oskaka and Kaldi right now. Yeah. Like, both went 5-0. Both great players. And then just falls just short. It really sucks. Yeah. Feels bad, man. Feels bad. I, know, I, I hate to say this, but I always said in my cast that I was like, Oskaka is a player known for falling one round short <laughs> in everything, in qualifiers. It's true. If you ever look at every qualifier Oskaka's played in, he always loses one round before going through, and it feels like that's the case here, too. But in the meantime, Let Me Farm is in the same spot. The Druid's gotten a 2-0 lead here. Mm -hmm. And now you have Smork to win three, like one of the three games. I mean, yeah. we all know Smorks. Like, it's gonna happen once or twice. Like. And Let Me Farm picked Warlock now, so he sticked to Patron for two games. And then ditches it. And ditches it for probably the best best matchup. For right? Hunter. I mean, mid range no, no, no. Hunter is good again. Is, that's, it's like he wants oh, to play against. It's mid range, okay. I thought yeah. it's yeah. like the, the name of the deck kind of threw me <laughs> out here. Oh, uh, what was it called? Smork. Smork. Oh, yeah. Yeah. nice. Memes. Memes. Well, he starts off. Uh, I saw a weapon. I didn't see anything else, though. Okay, he's got web spinner. I was like, well, he starts off a little awkward. Yeah. Let me. Uh, Anid's hand was pretty good. No, wait. Let me farm his warlock. I, uh, yeah, his let hand me farm is his really good. Um, he can take this. Is it? For a hand look, I like this hand. Because, like, you're going to do nothing here. Turn two. He goes for aggressive play, which I'm not sure if I really like. Uh, we talked a lot with this uh, with Life Coach about this, mm -hmm. and I I think we both said like we don't like to go for this play against Hunter, just like silence your or Asian Watcher. You always like never you're never gonna play Mountain Giants from that point on if yeah. you're in this matchup, which I don't like. I like to play like uh, Giant like turn five if you can. Like turn four is great. Like if you can play turn four, you just win the game usually against a mid range Hunter. And well. Life Coach plays almost always one uh, Owl, so the Owl yeah. is very valuable, so using it on your own Ancient Watcher, just like an Innervate Yeti, is not worth enough. But <laughs> here, I think it's even worth less in this situation, because there's a Freezing Trap, so if you bounce right. back your Ancient, ancient Watcher, it's basically worthless. Yeah, Yeah, and uh, not to mention you give an additional charge to the bow. Yep. Oh, so that's, that's more damage true. back. That's reset. Oh wait, Whoa. Is, I guess it's not Freezing Trap. You think so? Well, yeah, exactly. Why would he do that? Mm. No idea, though. It, it, it's probably just not freezing trap. Maybe it's Maybe bluffing. It's snake trap. Maybe it's explosive. And he's just I mean, we've de we have seen some um, mid range hunters run explosive trap. Yeah, I'm, like it sometimes happens when they're just like around one explosive, two freezing. So right. Just have some variability against aggros. Tap bomb. Seems yeah. Like play. Yeah. Play. Play as safe as you can with health. This is something that. A lot of new handlock players struggle with, which is, oh, I have Molten Giant, maybe I should take damage, but in this <laughs> matchup specifically, even if you have Molten Giant, Hunters can push past it and kill you, especially with the kill command in hand already. Turn 6, Svernheim. Well, this is something no one wants to see on the other side of the table. No, I mean, there's there's really no scenario where you generally want to see a high main on curve. Second high main. Well, that's well this that's turns really out to be ugly, really ugly. Yeah, he has. He also uses owls, and also that that trap. We still don't know what the trap is, and if it is freezing, then I mean it's, it's definitely kind of to haunt him. So Twilight Drake, that was a really good pickup. Now we can taunt it up with Defend of Argus, but still not great because that high main is going to be annoying, and you have no AOE in your hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he didn't opt to do, to attack. Hanmaster can. Hanmas is great on Savannah just to kill off the Twilight Rick in one swift strike. Then you play Kill Command and kill the second giant. I mean the second giant, the, the first giant with yeah. your uh, weapon actually. Yeah, that's the best option here. Yeah. Thinking Still about using the, the Misha. Yeah. No, it, 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 like, it hits like Handlock in all, every right spot here because 
He didn't put him low enough for Molten Giant okay. range. Do we see Shadow Flame? Top deck Shadow Flame would be huge. Oh. Oh, that's not too bad either. You yeah. still can go like uh, BGH, uh, Hellfire, right? Yeah. Well, it's reasonable, but then still two Spectral Spiders would be left on board. I don't think it's well, better play, though. The devastating part is that he high mains after again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's like the... That's like the dagger in, in the y groin. You know, what Lutman Farm needs next turn is a Siphon, Siphon Soul, soul. Mm -hmm. so to pair it up with the Owl, but I'm not sure if he, if he even plays it. Not many players are playing um, Siphon Soul Yeah, really at all. difficult. Yeah, and w also we see that he plays Double Owl, so then playing Siphon Soul is even harder, because like, what do you cut for Yeah. Second exactly. owl. And it was really funny because Siphon Soul was a staple card in the handlock for like a year. Right. No, of course. It's great removal and it plays directly into um, their playstyle. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, so he goes out of 13 and Jaime number 2 it will come down. And hopefully that Sludge Belcher can buy him some time. Ooh. Oh man. I, I don't mind keeping Web Spinner here in case you pick up another kill command. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think you don't want to necessarily do that. And fitting another hero power is really big. Yeah, that's the most important case. Right? Yeah. Two damage might be so important at the moment. Shadow Flame. Well, that's an answer to the board because right. you silence, silence the Savannah, play the Molten Giant, and uh, Shadow Flame, right? But now the, the board has evolved, or the game has evolved to a problem beyond just the board. You're mm -hmm. at 9 HP, and you, you have nothing. You might just die to direct damage, like quick shot. You know, silence an Iron Beak out, just like so, yeah, Iron Beak out, just dead. Any point of damage is really threatening because you don't have heal bot. Yep. And your only defensive card is Sludge Belcher, which yeah. you be, which you can play on turn nine. But then you, I think you play Owl as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Owl. You just play the Owl. Plus, uh, it's yeah. a, he has a trap, right? Mm -hmm. So it's exactly. freezing trap. He's he's it's in, he's indicated it's freezing trap. Yeah. So you gotta put your faith in the sludge, and hopefully this can work out. But a single Iron Beak Owl. Oh, look at that! Wow. End the game, and you need just like that is through to the round of eight. Very unceremonious for Let Me Farm. That was super quick. That was a really fast series. It was like 20 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. I just got that. You know, you just get that tingle, uh, spite <laughs> the spidey sense. It's like an owl comes up because it's like it always happens every single time. It's like okay, if I can stabilize here. I can win, maybe. But like then nope, you never owl. civilize. Yeah. Iron Beak Owl. No Denied. Owl. I mean, if there's one mechanic there, definitely, that uh, we, you might always want to, like, make sure not to make too uh, much of Blizzard, it's silence. Because <laughs> it's definitely like, well, that's not fun. If you just remove everyone's abilities for silence. Th then you yeah. also have, like, what if you had silence? That silence is the silence, right? That's oh, yeah. Maybe, 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 Reddit well, you, there, Reddit is, there is an unsilenced mechanic in the game. Yeah, there is one. It's Rebirth? called Resurrect. Re oh, Resurrect, yeah, yeah Resurrect. Yeah. Uh, no, not Resurrect. Um, Rebirth. Reincarnate. 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 Yeah. Well, actually, Resurrect does count, too. No, no, it doesn't. It, it well, revives a minion in unsilenced. So. <laughs> 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 but it's random. <laughs> yeah, so it Reincarnate from Shaman in unsilenced. It's a pretty cool thing. Uni's joined us uh, with the, an interview quickly just to congratulate him. So, uh, good job, man. 3-0. Looks pretty easy. It was not, but... Uh, yeah, it was not <laughs> easy. <laughs> I'm happy. Um... Let's talk a little bit about uh, your lineup. You you didn't bring Warrior or Warlock. You no. know why? Why did you choose to do that? Um, my composition is made uh, to beat Unlock, and um, I don't like to play Grim Patrol because uh, I'm not very good at it. So I just chose the classes I play uh, the best. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this tournament, I haven't lost with my rogue at all. Oh wow! Six zero. Six zero. Yeah. Dang. That's very impressive that's when it comes that's to really impressive. impressive. Yeah. And it's also a common tactic when you, when you interview the players that are winning. They almost always target the handlock. Yeah, that was a deck that I wasn't expecting people to single out, but there have been a lot of handlock players yeah. here, so it's worked out yeah. so far. Uh, who were who some of the hardest opponents that you faced on your way here to qualify for top eight? Uh, I faced uh, Freaky yeah. from mm -hmm. SK Gaming. Yeah. Um, and uh, a lot of also good players, but now I don't uh, remember the name. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was seven rounds. Yeah. Seven rounds that you... Uh, and the whole tournament too. was really stacked. Like, yeah. most of the people here were mm -hmm. really, really good. So, congrats for you, dude. Are Thank you me. the sole uh, remaining representative for France yeah. uh, here? Everyone else dropped out? Yeah. Uh, it's too bad. But, I mean, the French community is pretty strong overall. They've been done, doing pretty well. We saw the fish here yesterday. Yeah. He, he was doing okay. And, of course, 
We always see guys like Maverick and yeah, Luella okay. also doing well. Yep. Um, how, how's everything with Gamers Origin as well? Like you guys uh, do a lot of your own events, mm -hmm. and sometimes you guys travel to events here, like in DreamHack. So how's everything going over there? Uh, well, the team is going really well. Uh, we are creating a YouTube channel, and it um, is growing fast. Uh, we have a good lineup, and um, at this event, everyone went at least five two, so it's really cool. Um, How many players was that? Really three good. players, right? Yeah. Everyone almost went. Like everyone basically yeah. got top sixteen or higher. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah that's that's a very that's good highly impressive. That's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. French scene is just very talented in general, but people don't really know too much. The one thing I do want to ask though is that uh, last time we had the fish you here, he said that he doesn't think Patron's even a very strong deck. <laughs> and I wasn't sure if that was echoed in the French community or maybe that was just him. Do you think Patron's a strong deck? Um, I know it is because in ladder you. Uh, all the top 20 players play it all the time, but in a tournament I think it's different. Um, I don't like it and uh, I always win against it, so I don't know. Um, I know there are great players pe playing Patron like uh, Zalai and Purple Drink, but I haven't met them and every uh, Patron warrior I met, I, uh, you always uh, beat I won. Them. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is like what Oskaka says, it's like, yeah, uh, I don't really get people that target Green Patron Warrior because 95% of people that play Green Patron Warrior suck at it. <laughs> so Oskakas is like, Yikes. why Why would I target it? Because I'm going to defeat them anyway because they are bad at it. So, I mean, Oskaka, uh, Oskaka is a really, really great player of, of Green Patron. So that is brutal. I would take his word for it. Yikes, <laughs> I mean, I'm honest. Unless there's an Emperor or turn 6 into, you know... Some disgusting yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll, Feels we'll, bad, man, then. we'll hold back on judgment. Maybe people will just have to get better with it, and then uh, they'll figure it out in tournaments. Well, congratulations. You need your through to the round of eight. We'll see you tomorrow. And good luck in day number three. You mentioned Purple uh, from Archon as uh, one of those members who played the Patron Warrior very well. And he's going to be coming up on stream up against Amaz, his teammate. And that will be the final match of the night. The winner goes to the top eight. And unfortunately for Archon fans, there can only be one. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, the final match of day two here at DreamHack Summer 2015.